Good morning. Welcome to United First Parish Church. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are on your journey, welcome to our Unitarian Universalist spiritual community. We are delighted to welcome anyone who may be visiting with us. You can learn more about our community by going to our website, www.ufpc.org. Also on our website, you can find the order of service for this morning, which can be downloaded. We'll also print the, post the lyrics to hymns in the chat as we go along. I'm the Reverend Rebecca Froom. Our worship leaders this morning on screen and behind screen are our music director, Norman Corey, our director of religious education, Joan McDonald, and our digital usher, Fiona Sankey. And as Joan mentioned right before the prelude began, we are so excited to have Norman Corey's music in our worship services. Again, hearing that sound of our organ, different sounds than when we are in the physical space um, and a beautiful sound here over Zoom as well. For these online services, we invite you to go ahead and leave your video on so that we all might see one another when we choose to be in gallery view. Note that we are recording this morning's service to be posted on YouTube at a later date. If you would prefer not to be in the recording, you can go ahead and turn your video off. And if at any point during the service, your connection is starting to get a little, a little tricky, a little fuzzy, we invite you to turn your camera off and see if that improves your connection. Everyone is invited to stay online after the service for our virtual social hour. It's a bring your own coffee or tea affair. And this morning, our social hour includes the option of breakout groups to discuss and reflect on the theme of today's service. And now let us center ourselves for worship by taking a deep breath, feeling that spirit of life that moves within, between, and beyond us all. And our call to worship words this morning are by the Reverend Joan Javier Duval. Here, here is where you can lay it down, lay down all that you have carried, the weight of the world that has rounded your back, leaving you aching and exhausted. Here, here is where healing begins, where burdens are set down and alongside one another's, their magnitude does not seem so great. Here, here is where the door is thrown open and the light can lift away the shadows of what was hidden and can now be seen. Here, now, is where you can rest, where nothing is expected, but that you bring all who you are into the presence of the holy and this loving community. Come, let us worship together. And now we invite you, wherever you may be, to go ahead and light a candle or a chalice if you have one while Joan shares chalice reading, chalice lighting words with us today. We light our chalice, symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith with the words by Vance Bass. Every day brings struggle. Every day brings joy. Every day brings us the opportunity to ease the struggle of another, to be the joy in another's life. May this flame remind us to carry our lights to each other and to the world.
and join with me in saying our covenant, which is on the screen. As a free fellowship of this historic church, we unite to lift our hearts and open our minds to a larger reality, to accept, support, and encourage one another, to seek the wisdom in all religions, to cherish and sustain the web of life, and to strive for justice, compassion, and peace. And obviously I've forgotten that this is my part and I was waiting for the hymn. So this morning's story is called The King's Diamond and it's a tale from a man named Jacob Ben Wolf Kronz of Dub Dubnoy. Um, and he was a famous preacher, um, Magid, um, which is a storyteller, and he um, told stories and parables based on the Jewish tradition. There once was a king who had great wealth and power over a vast amount of land. He had a diamond that became world famous because it was not only flawless, but it was bigger than this mango. Many leaders of countries, kings and dignitaries from around the globe had heard about the diamond and would make a journey to the king's palace just to see it. They would approach the throne, usually with an expert jeweler from their own country and request to see the diamond. The king would pull out a golden box adorned with precious stones and open it and uncover the perfect diamond, and he would hand it to the jeweler to be judged. And every time this happened, and it happened hundreds and hundreds of times, the jeweler would astonish, would be astonished and exclaim, it's flawless, perfect, and he would hand it back to the king. On one such day, as a jeweler was passing the diamond, he dropped it onto the floor. And when he picked it up, he discovered a long arced scratch on the largest flat surface of the diamond. The king was devastated when he looked at the diamond. It was not perfect anymore. It was flawed. It's ruined, he shouted. For weeks, the king sat alone in his castle in a deep depression. But eventually, he decided he would find a jeweler gifted enough to restore the diamond to perfection. He offered a great reward and had hundreds respond. But they all said the same thing. It was irreparable, destined to be flawed forever. Eventually, the jeweler stopped coming. The king lost hope and became more depressed. Then one day, an old master craftsman from the local community walked into the palace requesting to see the diamond. The king was not very impressed by the sight of this man, but he decided to hear him out. The old craftsman looked at every face of the diamond, especially the one with the scratch. And then he looked at the king in the eye and said, with calm confidence, sire, I will not only restore this diamond to its prior state of flawless beauty, I will make it better. The king was so taken aback by the confidence of the man that he agreed to let him take the diamond with him. He was gone for a very long time, months. The king was overwhelmed with anxiety as he waited. It seemed endless. Then one day, the old master craftsman returned to the palace and went before the king. 
He handed the king a box, and as he opened it, he pulled out the cloth bag and the diamond from within it, and he looked at it with his magnifying glass, and he gasped, it is truly the most beautiful and most flawless diamond I've ever seen. The master craftsman was gifted in his skill of working on precious stones, but his bigger gift was in being able to see possibilities no matter what the situation. When others saw the flaw, a scratch in that perfect diamond, the master craftsman saw a work of art, a masterpiece. He used that scratch as the beginning. It became the stem for a rose that the old man carved at the top of it. It was indeed more beautiful than ever before. Perfect with flaws and all. Our opening hymn this morning is, I know this rose will open, arranged and performed by Dr. Glenn Thomas Rideout, and the lyrics will be in the video. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know, 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 I
and also a candle of sorrow, knowing that a sorrow shared is a sorrow diminished. Does anyone have a joy or a sorrow to share? Those sorrows that we hold silently in the sanctuary of our hearts. May the light of these candles and the compassion of this community Remind us that wherever we are on our journey, each of us is worthy of love and each of us is able to love. And now let us return to that deep breath of life and love, that breath that moves within, between and beyond us all. Let us take a moment to relax our bodies at least a little bit. Roll your shoulders back. Notice and then release tension that you may be carrying in your jaw, your hands. Wiggle your feet. Ground yourself into the chair that you sit on, the ground that you stand on. And let us breathe together as we enter a time of shared sacred silence. Will you lift your hearts and join me in the spirit of prayer, listening in these words for the language of faith most meaningful to you? Our prayer this morning includes words by the Reverend Jeremiah Sunshine Wolf. Eternal presence known in many ways known by many names. We gather this morning at the turning of the year when bright sun dances with cool winds and darkening evenings. We give thanks for the joys of our lives, for birthdays, the gift of this life journey of looking past at all we have done and all the people we've connected with, all the ways that we have grown, to look forward to all the learning and growth that awaits us in the years and decades to come. We open our hearts to all those who are struggling, struggling with job insecurity, especially the sudden loss of a job, the fear and anxiety that comes with job insecurity in this moment 
when so much is insecure, when so much is unknown. May we all remember to take a deep breath. May we find ways to care for one another as friends, as a city, as a country. We open our hearts to all those who are struggling with their health, those who are preparing for surgery, those who are recovering from surgery. May those who are struggling with their health be blessed with healing, be blessed with courage, be blessed with comfort and strength. And as we care for our friends and family, May we help to hold space to honor their depression, their anger, and their hopes and gratitudes. Source of our being, source of our goodness. As the COVID-19 pandemic spreads throughout the country, we see a spike in fear and anxiety along with the rising numbers of hospitalizations. In this time, we wish health for all those who have caught the virus. May they have healing. We open our hearts to those that we know and do not know who are on this path of illness and healing. May we find it within us as a people to share our resources to care for one another. May we know that in order to honor one another's lives, we continue to live within limitations, limitations that can be isolating but are terribly important. There is so much that is lost right now, so much that we need to grieve. And may our grief also be paired with gratitude for the love that we do have, for the gifts of noticing beauty, for the ways in which a smile can offer a small bit of healing. As we approach the Transgender Day of Remembrance this Friday, we remember all those who have been murdered for being who they are. Those who face violence on a daily basis. Those who have lost loved ones and those who worry for loved ones. May we come to a time when we cease to shame children around gender roles and expression. Where we allow for freedom and exploration of identity and expression and to a world that operates from love, especially when things are difficult and confusing. May all of us who live with the threat of violence find support, strength, community, hope, and safety from violence. Remembering that each of us is in some way broken and in some way whole. Let us honor the worth and dignity of ourselves and one another so that we might find even greater wholeness and in so doing, help bring even greater wholeness to our beautiful and broken world. We pray this for love's sake, amen and blessed be. Our reflection music this morning a Spirit of Life by Carolyn McDade. The words will be on the screen. Let us lift our voices in song. Spirit of Life stories of compassion flow with the wind rising the seas 
Our reading this morning is by Dr. Naomi Remen from her book, Kitchen Table Wisdom. Dr. Remen is a medical doctor, a professor and author. She writes, the healing of our present woundedness may lie in recognizing and reclaiming the capacity we all have to heal each other. The enormous power in the simplest of human relationships, the strength of touch, the blessing of forgiveness, the grace of someone else taking you just as you are and finding in you unsuspected goodness. Everyone alive has suffered. It is the wisdom gained from our wounds and from our own experience of suffering that make us able to heal. Becoming an expert has turned out to be less important than remembering and trusting the wholeness in myself and everyone else. Expertise cures, but wounded people can best be healed by other wounded people. Only other wounded people can understand what is needed for the healing of suffering is compassion, not expertise. Joe Harrison has been a tattoo artist for over 23 years. In that time, she has developed a specialty of designing tattoos that cover up scars. While this genre of tattoos is called cover-ups, Harrison's work is more about transforming scars into art than it is about hiding the scars. This transformation is both a highly technical artistic process on the part of the tattoo artist and a journey of healing for her clients. Most of Harrison's clients who are seeking a tattoo that will cover up or transform a scar have experienced trauma or loss. She works with people who have survived cancer, undergone gender affirmation surgery, survived self-harm or domestic violence, or people who have had their bodies changed by surgery. Every scar carries stories, stories of loss and change, of vulnerability and strength. In an interview, Harrison describes how very often when people come to me, they want to get a tattoo as a celebration of what they have survived. It is a memento for them about how strong they have been through some sort of adversity. She continues, I am drawn to helping people through that healing journey, reclaiming their body and a part of themselves that was lost. It is healing something really traumatic. She continues, it is very special to be chosen to be part of that healing process for people. For some people, they've never even shown anyone the scar. Even to show me is a huge step in their healing process. Harrison's tools include ink and pen. And just as importantly, she brings tools of deep listening of abundant compassion, of patience. All of these are crucial in her work of accompanying people on a healing journey to feel at home 
and in peace in their bodies. To recognize what they have lost, to mourn that, and in some way let it go while carrying the lessons of strength that have come with their journey. Dr. Naomi Remen writes, listening is the oldest and perhaps the most powerful tool of healing. It is often through the quality of our listening and not the wisdom of our words that we are able to affect the most profound changes in the people around us. When we listen, we offer with our attention an opportunity for wholeness. Our listening creates a sanctuary for the homeless parts within the other person. That which has been denied, unloved, devalued by themselves and by others, that which is hidden. She continues, listening creates a holy silence. When you listen generously to people, they can hear the truth in themselves, often for the first time. And in the silence of listening, you can know yourself in everyone. This is what Harrison and other tattoo artists do when they sensitively work with clients to transform scars into works of art. These open-hearted artists create a sanctuary, a space made by holy, generous listening. And in that sanctuary, healing can happen. People literally show their scars and the artist says, I see you. I see the brokenness, the loss, the hurt, the journey. I see you, beautiful, whole. In our story this morning, we heard about a diamond that was cracked and a gem artist was able to fix that diamond by etching a rose on top of it, having the line, the crack become the stem of the rose. And it's interesting that when people have a tattoo placed over and around a scar, they and the artist very often choose flowers, plants, perhaps birds, different living beings and plants where the curves and the lines can naturally bend around and with the scar. Stems, leaves, blooms wind their way across, between, around scars creating a whole new garden of life. Dr. Renan is a forerunner in integrative medicine, and she has learned a lot from psychology, including learning from Dr. Carl Rogers, a humanistic psychotherapist specializing in unconditional positive regard. Unconditional positive regard. It's a school of psychology and perhaps also the school of tattoos to see someone's body with positive regard, with all of the scars, all of the wrinkles, all of the imperfections of the person's skin, to see someone and see them whole. And how do we do this? In talking about unconditional positive regard, Dr. Rogers has said, before every session with a client, I take a moment to remember my humanity. There is no experience that a person has that cannot be shared, no fear that I cannot understand, no suffering that I cannot care about because I too am human. No matter how deep a person's wounds, they do not need to be ashamed in front of me as I too am vulnerable. And because of this, I am enough. And whatever a person's story, they no longer need to be alone with it. This 
is what healing allows healing to begin. So often we wonder how healing can happen in ourselves or a loved one. We wonder how to be present with a friend or family member who is experiencing suffering. How do we help this person heal? What are the perfect words, the acts of kindness that will create a cure that will open the door to health and well-being? Dr. Remen, Dr. Rogers, and the tattoo artist Joe Harrison, they are all experts in their own fields. Their technical knowledge is crucial to, to their work. And they all know that perfection is not possible. But creating a space for deep listening is both possible and crucial to the healing process. Each week in Joys and Sorrows, I share, I say that a sorrow shared is a sorrow diminished. And by diminished, I mean lessened, lightened. Because in sharing our sorrows, we are recognizing the experience of one another rather than di diminishing that experience. When our pain can be given space to be voiced, it is lightened in some small way. So people need a space to share their stories as part of their healing journey. Sometimes this takes the form of telling the narrative of their journey, like we do when we share briefly but fully in joys and sorrows. Other times, our stories are shared by showing a gifted stranger our scars an artist, a doctor. However, a person shares their story when a wounded person is able to be truly seen and heard, that holy space is created for healing. Let us return to those words from Dr. Rogers. There is no experience that a person has that I cannot share with them, no fear that I cannot understand, no suffering I cannot care about because I too am human. I too am human. You are human. Each of us with our own imperfections. Each of us like the jeweler, the doctor, the tattoo artist, able to see both the imperfections in one another and the possibilities beyond those imperfections. When we see ourselves as vulnerable and whole by affirming our own humanity, we are able to have the empathy to treat one another with compassion. Bell Hooks has said, rarely, if ever, are any of us healed in isolation. Healing is an act of communion. Healing is an act of communion. Friends on the journey, may we remember that our healing journey is important for ourselves and for one another. May we remember that when we can accept our own humanity, see our own wholeness as well as our brokenness, we create the possibility of becoming companions and teachers for those around us. May we see the possibilities of healing beyond hurt. May we see the work of art just beyond the cracks and scars. May we use the scratch in the diamond, the scratch on the skin, the scratch on our souls as the beginning of a healing that may bloom with great beauty within and beyond us. May we truly listen to one another, creating the spaces of sanctuary that allow for this healing and this growth. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.
Our next hymn is My Life Flows On. The words will be in the chat as the music plays. My life was on in endless song above the lamentation. I hear the real, the far off hymn that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife. drink from wells we did not dig, and we sit in the shade of trees we did not plant. As recipients of all we've received from those who have come before us, we're called to share our abundance with those who will come after us. As a voluntary association, our church is sustained through the gifts of the members and friends of this congregation. Your generosity makes it possible for us to hold online worship services, workshops, and small groups even in these unusual times. Your generosity allows us to be faithful stewards of our historic building so that it will continue to be a place of sanctuary and learning when it is once again safe to gather in person. Your generosity helps us to strive for justice and live our congregation's values in the wider world. Please take this moment to visit our website and consider clicking on the donate button located on the homepage of our website, ufpc.org. Let us open our hearts as these gifts to support the good works of United, Par Par United First Parish Church are joyfully given and gratefully received. <laughs>
Here at United First Parish Church, there are many ways to participate in the life and the leadership of our congregation. We send out weekly announcements by email on Thursday, and I have a few items to highlight today. Our ongoing programs include that every week our Director of Religious Education, Joan McDonald, creates a children's chapel service for families to watch in their own time. And those videos can be found on the religious education page of our UFPC website. We'll be pasting that link there in the chat. Every Thursday afternoon, we continue to host a Black Lives Matter standout from 3.30 to 5.30, beginning on the front steps of our church. This is in partnership with Quincy for Transformative Change. And we hope you will join us from time to time in bringing this moral message that Black Lives Matter to the heart of Quincy. Next week is our annual pre-Thanksgiving service. And it's wonderful that violinist uh, Jagannath Khalsa will be joining Norman and making music as we have done before. And in past years, we have held a food drive where people brought food into our sanctuary and added it to our cornucopia decorations. And this year we are again doing a food drive for interfaith social services. Uh, but rather than bringing items to the church, we encourage you to bring your food donations directly to interfaith social services or to contribute money. We'll be pasting, pasting the link right there for the donation page. Um, hours are on the Interface Social Services website and they have weekday hours. And next Sunday, the 22nd, they're also open in the afternoon uh, for folks to bring food donations. My final announcement today is that the worship committee and I are looking to have more folks involved in our online worship services this year. There are many roles. Uh, we're going to be returning to the tradition of congregants selecting a chalice lighting reading. Uh, so think about if that's something you'd like to do from time to time. We also have a team of folks who are doing the behind screen of our Zoom worship in the role of digital usher or sharing the slides. And we'd love to have a couple more people join that team. And also we have these images of the congregation of the church building of our community that we show in slides during worship and have up on our Facebook page and our website. And We'd love to see your photographs of our spiritual home, our beautiful grounds of past congregational events and traditions. Uh, so you can email photos right to me and I'll send out an email later this week, uh, reiterating, noting all those different ways to be involved in creating and crafting online worship. And now let us return to that breath of life that is there to ground and guide us. That breath of life that each of our spiritual companions at United First Parish Church participates in. And her words of benediction are by Reverend Darcy Roke. There is too much hardship in this world to not find joy every day. There is too much injustice in this world to not right the balance every day. There is too much pain in this world to not heal every day. Each of us ministers to a weary world. Let us go forth now and do that and calls us and do that which calls us to make this world more loving, more compassionate, and more filled with the grace of divine presence every day. May we go in peace and go in love to be a blessing to the world. Amen. And blessed be. Please join me in singing Carry the Flame as we extinguish our chalice. 
words will be on the screen. And thank you, Lee Forrest and Anne Marie Willer, for continuing to share your beautiful music with us. Please join us for our virtual social hour after the service. This Sunday, we have the 